In this video, I'll show you how to create a header and footer with Elementor Free using the Flexbox container. Hey guys, what's up? This is Michaela. Before I go into the tutorial, I'm going to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. So come on guys, I'm here at Nail Pro, which is a landing page that I taught you how to create here on the channel. I'll leave the link on the card and in the description if you want to go and learn. And I also taught this one with Elementor Free, okay? And here's the thing, Elementor Free, by default, doesn't allow you to create header templates to be on every website, on different pages, a single template. With Elementor Pro, we can, so much so that it's here in templates, add a new one. There will be a header option here, see? This is a function of Elementor Pro, of Elementor Paid. When you don't have it, it only gives you page options and section options. It doesn't allow you to create these separate templates. So, if you want to create with Elementor Free, you have to add an extra plugin to allow you to create this layout. Then you come here to Plugins, Add New. Then you'll search here for Header and Footer Elementor, which is this plugin here, this plugin here. Click on install and activate. I've already activated mine, that's why it looks like this, okay? Once you've installed and activated it, we'll start creating our layout here. When you install and activate it, it'll be here. You hover the mouse over its appearance and it stays here. See? Every time you want to go to the templates, know that this is it. Then you click up here and here are the templates you've made. As I had installed it before, it's not showing the pop-up that appears for us to confirm. A search only pop-up will appear here. You can click on skip below and it will come here, okay? Then you'll click here on add a new one. Then you can give your header a name. I'm gonna name it menu. I'm gonna right click here and click on translate into Portuguese so you can see it. Here you can choose the type of your template. We're gonna choose header, which is the menu. And here, where we want it to be displayed, I'm going to put the whole website. Remember that I right-clicked and clicked to translate it into Portuguese. That's why it's showing in Portuguese, okay? We'll put it here so that it appears on the whole website. There are other options here for you to choose from too, if you want them on separate pages. For example, if you want it to appear only on the contact page or on a specific page, you have to come down here under specific pages and posts, click. Then you start typing in the name of the page that will appear. For example, I have a page called test, then I select it. See, I can set it to appear only for that page. In my case, I want it to appear for the whole website. So I'll come up here and select the whole website, okay? User role, I'm going to leave everyone the same because I want it to appear for all types of user. I'll come up here and click on publish. It will have published our template. Then I can click here on edit with Elementor and start configuring. I'm creating this layout here with Elementor's Flexbox container technology. There's already this video here on the channel teaching basically the same thing with sections and columns, which is the previous technology. If you click here and you see these little arrows going back and forth in your containers here, it's because the Flexbox container is active in yours. If not, it's sections and columns. And if you've made your website with sections and columns and you want to continue leaving your website in sections and columns, there's this video here that's for that. Okay, this one. So you come here to the channel, search for it in the magnifying glass, and it's this little green video here that's about sections and columns. Okay? The one I'm going to do now is for the container, okay? If you haven't activated the container, you can go to WordPress, Elementor, Settings, Resources. Here in the container, you'll leave it active, okay? And then click on Save down here, okay? I've activated the grid too, that's why it's showing up here on mine. If you haven't activated it, no problem. It'll appear here, then you'll click on it, then you'll choose a little arrow to the side. On the line here horizontally, that's it. Then here in the container, in the main container, you can see the style, the type of background. And here you choose the color you want. You can either put the color code here or choose here in the bar. Just keep changing it. Choose the color you want here. Or if you've already set the default colors, you can click here in the little world. In my case, I had already made these settings. There's a video here on the channel teaching you how to make your default settings so you don't have to keep repeating these things, okay? So all you have to do is click on the little world and choose. I'm going to choose this purple color here, okay? After that, you come to the library and you can choose an image and drag it over here. 
I'm going to come here to the image. I'm going to make it full size. I'm going to come here to choose an image and I'm going to take the logo here, which is this logo here. See, now I'm going to go to the library and get the menu widget, which is what's going to make our links here. The menu widget is this one. See, navigation menu, which is these three little bars. It's provided by the plugin we installed because Elementor Free itself doesn't provide this pretty menu here for us to configure. So you'll take this one, drag it over here, and it'll already take the menu you created. Oh, another thing. I'm going to click on the little arrow here and click on save things so I don't lose anything. This menu that I've pulled up here, it has to have already been created here in WordPress. If you haven't created it, nothing will appear. And to create the menu, you go here to appearance menus. See, I already have one here. If you haven't created it, nothing will appear. Then you enter the name of the menu and click on create. I'm going to create one from scratch here so you can see. I'm going to click here on create new menu. Then it will appear like this. See? Then you'll put the name of your menu here. I'll put test menu just because I've already created another one. And then you'll click here on create menu. That's it. Now you can add the links you want. Here in view all, you can see all the pages you have. I'm going to add these pages that I have here for you to see. Then you can drag and drop the pages. You can also add custom links here, for example. I want the main page to be called home. Here, see, I put home and here I put the link to the page I want. So, for example, the link here to the main page. See, I can customize it like this. If I want to set up just one section here, for example, I only want it to come here. Who am I? It's this section here, see? Who am I? I can come, uh, let me add this one. I can come here with a personalized link. Then I put the name here, for example, who am I? And here's what I do. I put the link to the page. See, it's on this page here. I put the link here. It always comes with a little bar, okay? You have to leave that bar. Then I'll put the hashtag and an ID so I can identify this section here. In my case, I'll put who I am. It has to be all together, tiny and without any punctuation, okay? So I put it like this, who am I? Then I'll add it here. See, here we can drag it over here and put it the way we want. If you've put one you don't want, you can click here and remove it. See, I click here and click remove. Then, once you've put in all the links you want, you click here on save menu. And then in this one, for example, the one about who I am, which I put in this little section here, I have to come to this section and put this ID here that I created, which is this ID called who I am. So I have to come to this page, which is the page I want. Come here in this container, come here in advance, and here in the ID, I'll put the one I put who I am, just like that. See? There you go. Then I'll reload the page here, just to show you. Click here. Here in the menu, you can see the menus that are there, that you created there. See? There are two in mine, because I already had this one. There's that test menu I created to teach you. See, I'll put it here just so you can see it. So if I click here on who I am, it takes me exactly to this section. See, so that's it, okay? You should know that you have to create this little menu inside. That's it. And another thing, if you've reached this point and you've gone and created the menu in here, remember that you have to come and reload the page so that you can see the menu here to pull it up. Okay? Okay. Then I'm going to go back to the library. I'm going to take a button, drag it over here to put a button here. And now we just have to configure it. I'll come to this menu, for example. I'll come here to style. I'll leave the text color white. The color of the hover, which is the color of the mouse over action, is purple, right? I'm going to change it to pink. Then when I hover, it will look like this. I've also got the typography set up here. I'm going to use this text typeface, see? It will look like this. If you want, you can click here, choose the font, choose the size here, choose the thickness here, okay? And this is the active color setting. For example, when you're on the start page or the home page, it'll be colored here, see? I'll make it pink too. It'll be active. Then I'll click on the button. I'll write here, for example, sign up, right? Which is for, this page here is for a course. So it makes sense. Then here in the link, I'll leave the link to the first page, right? Then you can add any link you like. If you want a WhatsApp link, 
you can do that too. I'll come here in style, background color. Here I'm going to select the color pink. I'll leave it like this. Mine is already set to rounded, but if yours isn't, you can go here to rounded. I'll put 30, for example. It's rounded. And this is the typography. Here I've already set it up. I've taken the default typography. If you don't have it, you can come here and change it. For example, I'll put this Poppins font here. See? Then you can change the font, you can change the size, you can change the thickness, you can change all the text here, okay? I'll leave this one here, which was already set up. And here in the hover, which is the action of hovering the mouse, I'm just going to leave this grow animation here so that when we click on it, this little animation appears. And now we're going to configure the spacing. Here in the container, we're going to do a calculation. I have two spaces here this space and this space. I'm going to come here in this main container. I'm going to put the space between the elements here. I'll put it in percent. I'll put 2%. We're saying that the space between each of the items is 2%. So we only have 4% of space. 2 here and 2 here. So if we have 100% of the area minus 4% of space, we have 96% of free area for the widgets. This one, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to go to width, which is where we set the total width of the item. I'm going to go to customize and I'm going to make it smaller until it's a size that I think looks good. 14 is fine. And this one too, I'm going to go to sign up. I'm going to come here to the button, I'm going to come to advanced, I'm going to come to width, I'm going to leave it customized. And I'm going to set a width that I think looks good here too. 13 is good too, so I have 96 minus 13 minus 14, leaving 69. So in this menu here, I'm going to come to it, I'm going to come to advanced, I'm going to come to width, I'm going to leave it customized, and I'm going to put 69. It's important that the little percentage option is there, okay? I've put in 69 because that's how much space is left here, see? So I'm using all the space on the screen. Then I'm going to come here to the container. I'm going to come here to justify content. I'm going to make them center aligned. I'm going to come here to align the items. I'm going to leave them aligned to the center too, see? Because one was up, one was down. And this menu here, I have to come to it in the menu widget itself too. Come to content, come to layout and make it center aligned because that's why it was off to the side. See, that's fine. So we've already configured our header here for the desktop, for the computer. All you have to do is click here on refresh. And then if you're accessing the website here, you'll be able to see it. For example, I'll access it here on this page. On this page here, we can't see it because this page is set to disappear with the header. If any page on your website has this happening, it could be because of this. Then you can go here to edit Elementor, edit with Elementor. Click here on the little gear. Here, see, I left Elementor canvas. To make the header appear, you have to leave Elementor full width and click on refresh. Because then, If I access the page here, the header will appear here. See, it will appear here. So watch this. If you have any pages where the header isn't showing, just go there and disable the Canva option. Leave Elementor at full width and it will show the header here. Okay, let's finish setting it up for mobile now. To set it up for mobile, we'll come down here in responsive mode. We'll click, we'll choose mobile mode. We'll make some settings. We're going to come here to this one, which is the logo. Then we're going to come here to width. We're going to change it here to percentage. We're going to increase the width and leave it here at the size we think is cool. Then I'll come here to the menu. By the way, let me see here how much it was. 42%. I only want the menu and the logo to be next to each other. So let me do the math here. 100 minus 2, which is the only spacing you'll have. 98. Minus 42 for the width of the logo. That leaves 56 spaces for me to place the menu here. I can click here, come to advanced, spacing. I'll change it to percentage. I'll put size 56. See? Then they're next to each other. If you want, you can make the logo bigger. Make the menu smaller, okay? Whatever you think is best. The button here, I don't want it to appear here in the header, which I think will be too big here on mobile. When I don't want it to appear, I can come here, come in advanced. If I wanted it to appear, I could come here, go to custom and leave the width 
at 100% and then it would look like this. I could also come to content and leave it justified and then the little menu would look like this. Then I'd have to come in the container, come in at minimum height and increase the width here so it looks like this because it's sticking to the other one. But I don't want it to show. So I'm pressing Ctrl Z to undo all this. Then I'm going to come here to this button. I'm going to come to advanced. I'm going to come to responsive and I'm going to hide it for cell phones, cell phones, tablets, tablets. I'll just leave the television options here. Remembering that several are showing on mine because I've configured it, that's an extra setting too. Yours will only show TV, tablet, and computer. If yours doesn't have any extra settings, okay, then when we close it, we can see what it's going to look like on the cell phone. It looks like this, see? For now, we click on it and it looks like this. Then let's finish configuring the menu. We click here, we come here to style, here to trigger menu, which is this little item. We come to set the color. I'm going to set it to white here. You can set a background for it too, see? pink. Then you can increase the size of the icon, increase the size of the border, see? The border. Make it rounded, see? You can leave it like this. I think it'll look good like this. Leave a white color here too. And then I'll come here to this little bar and make it really transparent, you see? Just to give it a little background color. That's it. That's it. In this border widget here, I'm also going to leave zero and I'm going to reduce the size of the icon like this. Then on the one below, which is the drop down, we'll go to style drop down and we'll set the color of the text. I'm going to take a gray color here that we can see. Background is the color of the background. I'm going to leave it white. Here in the hover, which is the action of hovering the mouse, I'm going to leave the color white. And the background, which is the background, I'm going to make it purple. See, when I hover the mouse, it will be purple with white. Then it'll look like this. So we have these options. You have the option of doing this from here. Or you also have the option of setting it up another way. You can come here, come to layout. And here in layout, you can configure it. See? horizontal then it goes down here or you can leave it horizontal or vertical which will change almost nothing or you can leave this one here and it'll be very tight here or the coolest one for mobile which is this other one here which is the fly out it makes a little pop-up see when you click on it it opens a little pop-up here then of course you have to come here to style and configure it which is another way see here, the typography changes. The background, which is the background color, is white. You can change it if you want. If you change it, the rest of the configuration is already working. See? That's it. If you don't want to, if you want to leave it white, then you have to configure the rest, for example. Then you have to come here to the typography. In the text, leave it in a color you can see. I think it looks better. Purple. That way it's more visible too. It's cooler, you know. And that's how our header looks here on mobile. Then you can click on refresh. Remember that there are other versions here for tablets and everything else. You can click and configure it for tablet too. Each time you configure it, it only changes in that version, okay? Fine, but then you have a problem. If you set it up here on mobile, ah, but this plugin has a problem. Yes, guys, it's Elementor Free that has these options. If you did it with Elementor Pro, everything would be fine. But with Elementor Free, you have to be creative and that's how it works. If you don't pay for the tool, you have to find alternatives and configure them yourself. That's the way it is. There's no point in complaining. Back to the explanation. The only problem is that if you want to set it up this way with the little pop-up, it looks like this on the computer too. The pop-up looks like this on your computer too. Then you need to do something else. You need to duplicate this if you want to keep this configuration. Then in one of these, which is this one, for example, you can go here to advanced, responsive, and hide it for the desktop so that it doesn't appear on the computer. And then this one, you come here, you come in layout and leave it normal horizontal. And come here to advanced responsive and hide it for mobile, for tablet, all the mobile versions here. And then it will look like this when you reload it. On the desktop, it will only show this one. 
and only this one will appear on the cell phone. We've configured one to appear only on the computer and the other to appear only on the cell phone. If you don't want to do all this, no problem. Just come here. Leave only one of them and don't use the little pop-up. Come here to content, come to layout, leave it in the normal horizontal position and then it will look like this. It looks like this normally. And don't forget, if you're coming here in responsive, to remove these hides here, otherwise it will appear too. It will appear here normally and on mobile, it will appear normal too. Okay, we've done the header here. Now let's move on to the footer. Now we can make our footer. I'm going to use this other website here as an example. This one is an institutional website that I made with Elementor Free as well. I taught you how to create it here on the channel and I'll also leave this link here in the description and on the card if you want to go there and learn how to do it. Here's a footer template that we usually use on practically every website which is this more institutional one. I'm going to show you how to do this one which is the one you'll use the most. We're going to go back to the WordPress admin panel. If you're here in the Elementor editor, you can just click on these four lines and click on exit. Then you can select the WordPress panel here and apply. Okay, now let's go back. We're going to go back here to appearances, Elementor header and footer. We'll click here to add a new one. Let's give our template a name. I'm going to put footer. We don't need to create the footer here in WordPress like the menu. It's just a template made with Elementor. We just wanted the template here. Here we'll choose the type. We're going to add a footer. If yours is in English, it might say footer. If it's in English too, you can right click and click on translate to Portuguese. Here we'll select where we want it to appear. I'm going to put it on the entire site so that it appears on every page of the website. Here we'll leave the default so that it can go to all users. Then we'll click here on publish. That's it. Now we'll click here on edit with Elementor and we'll start creating our template. There are five columns here, five divisions. I'm going to do that. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here on Flexbox. We're going to take this container here that has one, two, three, four containers inside. In this case, there are five in the template. We can click on one of the containers with the right button here on top of that little square. See? And click on duplicate. There will be five here. That's fine. And we'll get on with it. First thing, we're going to come here in the main container. Go to advanced, padding. Let's put 50 padding. We're going to come here in style, type of background. Let's come here in the little world. Let's take this purple color. Let's go here to the library. Drag the image here. Let's take the image of the white logo, which is this one. Let's go here. Let's drag a title over here. Here I'll put the slogan. For example, here, since it's about nails, I'll put learn how to create incredible nails. For example, I'll leave it centered. I'll put it in style. I'll put it in color. I'm going to leave it white. I'm going to come here in typography. I'm going to take this secondary typography here. In fact, I think I'm going to use this one for the text. It looks better. And I'll let the transformation capitalize so it's not all capitalized. Now I'm going to come here. I'm going to take a title. Drag it over here. I'll do the same here. I'll take contact for example. The title here will be the title of the contact section where we'll put the contact details. I've put contact here. I'll come here in style. The color. I'm going to change to a lighter color here. Typography. I'll take this secondary one. Then I'll click on it. I'll click on duplicate. I'll drag it here to the other container. I'll do the same thing. Duplicate. Drag to the other one. Duplicate. And drag to the other one. Then I can just change the titles now. For example, here, institutional. I'll come to that one. I'll paste the word institutional here. I'll copy our specialties. I'm going to come here. I'll paste it here. And here's where to find us. I'm going to come here and paste it here. Here I'll take out ours. I'll just leave the specialties. Now, to make these little lists here, for example, this one is a list with icons. We came from the library. Let's take a list of icons, which is this one. 
drag it down here. It has to be diagonal here, the little pink list that appears there. Then it appears here. Then you can delete everything. Leave just one. Then you go from the first one and start changing the icons. To change the icon, click here. I'm going to choose the WhatsApp icon to be the WhatsApp contact. Here we put the number. Put a fictitious number here. See? And here you can put the link to WhatsApp. Then I'll double it. I'll leave the same number. I'll change the icon to phone. Then I'll write phone. Always look for the icons here in English because they're always in English. Then I'm going to select here and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to add the email icon to. The email icon is interesting to have. The email is an envelope. Then I'll select it here and here I'll change it. Put in your contact details, arobanailpro.com. It's just a dummy. It's an example. There's a video here on the channel teaching you how to make a professional email with your own domain. Okay. Now we're going to change the color of the text. It's almost not showing. Let's go to style, icon. If you want to change the color, you can change it here. I'll leave it the same color. I'll just make it bigger. I'll increase its size here to 18. Then I'll come here in text. I'll come here in color. I'm going to change it to white. And then here in typography. I'm going to leave this typography as it is and I'll come here to the list and in spacing, I'm going to increase it. See, so that it gives a bit more space between them. Okay, then I can duplicate this. Drag it over here. Here, since I only want texts. See, there are no icons here. Then I'll click here. I'll come here to content. I'll delete them all. And in this first one, I'm going to delete the icon. Then I want only the little text to appear. See, then I'll write it here. So, I'll put it here at home. I'll duplicate it. I'll put about about me. Who's going to make a teacher about me? Contact. And workshop. Remember, that's it. We put in the links we think are useful. This is an institutional website, so I've left the most useful links here, which is home, about us, blog, contact, here, just to be consistent with the project. I've put it here, things relating to this sales page, which you have here. See? But there, you can put any links you like. We usually use the most useful ones here, some shortcuts, okay? And there, remember that in each of these tabs, there's a link here, see? So, for example, in the case of the workshop, you can go here. Then in the case of this page here, see, I'll take the link up there. And then I come and paste the link here. See? All right. I'll update. There. I'll come here with specialties. Another thing, if you don't want to get the links, look, there's no page here. On the home page here, we can see the header we made. If you want to add a menu, like the ones here, for example, in the about section, which leads here. To this section, here it would go to this little section, here, about the teacher. Just go here, right click, click on copy link address, then you'll copy it, just like that. Then you just come and paste it here, okay? You can do it like this too, there in specialties, I'll just duplicate it and put it here, but then it would be the same, okay? You come here, delete it, or you just replace it here, the title and the link, I'll leave it here. Just to give you an example, always updating so you don't miss anything, okay? And where to find us. These are social network icons that we use. So you come here, take the social icon, drag it over here, down, and here. It already has some defaults. If you want, you can delete them. See, there's always one left that you can't delete, then you can either leave it or change it. Click here, I'll leave the YouTube one, I'll click here to add another one, then I'll come to this one, I'll switch to Instagram, oh, I'll click add another one, the Telegram one, for example. And if you want something you don't have here, for example, TikToks, there aren't any, you'll come here, click here, and send the SVG icon, and then you'll upload it. The icon here, there are several sites that allow you to Download SVG icon for free. There's a video here on the channel teaching you about SVG icons free. I already have them here on my computer. I'm going to click here and I'll select. I use TikTok. I'll type in TikTok there in the magnifying glass. It'll find it here. I'll click open. That's it. Then just click on insert media. See, then it puts the icon. Then here in shape, you set the shape. I'll make it a circle. Style. You set the color. If you want to leave it, the official color. It takes the default color. If you want to change it, you can come here, click on customize. Here you set the primary color, which is the one on the outside. And here, the inside color, leave it white. See, here you can set the size. 
I'll leave it about that size. Remember that if you want to leave each one in a different color, you can leave it like this, official color, back here in content, and in each of the icons, you can change it. See? For example, this one on Instagram, which is usually gray, you go here, select customize, and it lets you, I'll put it in, just Instagram, in pink. See? TikTok. Also, I'm gonna come here, personalize it, I'll leave it. Just the TikTok. I don't know what black TikTok is. See? That's the standard color for icons. You can do it that way too, okay? Okay. There's this little part under here. See? That's it, usually. A little text that we leave here in the footer. Almost every website has it. It's kind of obligatory, especially this one about privacy policies. You have a place for people to see the policies. There's also a video here teaching you. Put the privacy policy pop-up, okay? Oh, I'm going to copy this one. Then I'll come here. In the editor, I'm coming. I'll take it. I'm coming in a flex box. I'll take a container with the little arrow on the side. I'm coming here in a title like this. I'll duplicate it. I'll drag it over here. I'm going to come here in this container. I'm going to style it. Type of background. Then I'll choose another color here. I'll choose it. This purple color. I'm going to choose this purple color. I'll just make it a little darker to give it a little difference at the bottom on the top. That's it. Then I came here in this one. I'm going for style, in color, I'll leave it white, then I'll come here to content and I'll paste the text here, see, it looks like this, here in the case, you come and change it, here you leave the name of the text, here it is, I'll leave it, nail art, that's the name of my project, copyright, and here, the year is 2023, all rights reserved, okay, then we can duplicate this one, if you want to put this little part here, for people to go to the privacy policy, if you haven't already put it up here, then you come, copy it. If you've already put it on the list above, you don't have to, then just leave this one, okay? I decided to put it here, because I hadn't put it up there. Privacy policy, I copied it, I pasted it here, there to leave a link, so that people can click on it and go to the privacy policy page. There's a link tab here, see? You click here and you paste it. If you already have the privacy policy page, when you click here, it will already say so. Then you just select it, not this one. I don't have it here, created on this website. But there's a video on the channel teaching you how to create it. Fine. I'll come here. I'll come in style. I'm going to change the typography from this one to this one to make it smaller. I'm going to come here in this container. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to leave 10 padding. I'll come here in layout. I'll make them all center aligned and with space between them. That way there's one there and one here. Okay, I'm going to click here on refresh. This image here, it's the logo image. We usually want people to be able to click here and go back to the home page. So it's interesting that we put the link here. That's why we come here to the link. Select the custom URL and put the link to the home page. The main page here, in my case, I'll put the link here to the sales page. Okay, I clicked save again. There's our wheel. It looks like this. Let's see how it looks on mobile. We're going to click on responsive mode here. Let's put it here on the phone. Good. It's basically all set up here with plenty of space. Then if you want to reduce the space around here, it's too big. You can come here in the container, go to advanced, decrease it. I'll leave 30 here for padding. That'll leave a nice space here. I'm going to come here on this one. I'll come here in advanced. I'll leave 20. I'm going to increase his space. Layout. And I'll leave it centered and aligned to the center. So it looks like this. Okay. I'm also going to put it in the text itself. The one above, I'm going to come in content and I'll center it so that it's centered right here. Good. So that's our footer here. Okay. Now I'm going to click on refresh and I'm going to access my home page here so I can show it to you. Check it out. Here's the header we created. And down here, if we come, there's our footer. This shows two footers because this one I created inside the page there. See, on any page we go to, our header and footer will be shown here if we've set it up like that. For example, if I go to the workshop page, neither the header nor the footer appear because I had removed that setting. Remember, it always has to be like this. You have to come here to Elementor. Go to settings. All pages must be like this. Elementor full width. All the pages you want the header and footer to appear on. See? 
and then like this. The header and footer appear there, okay? If it's in Canva Elementor, it disappears with the header and footer. The pages that are like that won't appear, okay? One thing we haven't set up yet, it's putting the link here in the logo because usually we leave the logo here in the header with the intention that the person clicks on the logo and come back here to the main page to the home page of the website. All you have to do is click here. There will always be a link here. Then you click. It changes to a custom URL. Then you copy the link to your website here or the link to the home page or whatever you want the home page of your website to be and paste it here and click on update i really hope you enjoyed it if you liked it leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel follow me on social media cheers see you next time bye